So, to replace the wick, which as you can see has been damaged, is corroded here, I've used one core of a three core copper electric cable, pegged it out on a piece of wood with some pins and some nails. We have a distance from this here to here of approximately 1.5 centimeters, and from here all the way through to the end here of 18 centimeters. That will give you then a replacement inner core from the wick here, which originally came out of the tube, but is completely rusted along here. Now, I've chosen copper because it should be a little bit less corroded from, you know, from the spirits. It should hold up a bit more better against the spirits. And what I'm going to use to replace this wick, which I think, it seems to be cotton, or it could be glass fibre. I've tried melting it, it does sort of burn a bit. But I'm replacing it with a length of this wick here. This is two meters, a two meter wick. Uh, wick number seven. I think you can be done there. And I've counted the strands on the original. And I think, yeah, we should be able to get about the same amount on there. Um, that should do the job. Making sure, of course, that the strands are tied off onto the end of the cable. So you've got like the thickness of um, of the of the actual the thickness of this is um, it's approximately a millimeter here. So it's approximately a millimeter. That's a bit of a sort of a bit more. And then on the original, there are sixteen strands, so that's half. So you'd only have a wrapping of eight between this point here and this point here back here. So you'd have a wrapping of eight. So if you make sure that the loop, there's always a loop at the bottom, so you can put a thread in to pull it, you know, when you actually pull it through the tube, through the tube of the actual burner, you can actually pull it through. So I reckon if we go for, I think maybe six, six strands, which should be three wraps, half, tie it off again here, approximately here with, I'll be using some barber thread to tie that off, maybe a thin piece of copper wire, one of the filaments of this perhaps at the end. And as you can see, I've just soldered it up a bit and to make it sort of stick together. It looks very rough. This bit at the back end, of course, here, this will be, you know, this will be chopped off, removed up to this to length of this nail. And that should give us equivalent wick in order for it, or to pull it through the tube to make it work. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Here are the rest of the bits. I used a, a, bare, a very large um, paper clip to pull out the wick, which has a little head on it here. And as you can see, that's uh, what you cannot see because it's a terrible camera. I've sort of gone through it. So that's basically the plan. We'll see if it works in the next video. So we have put on three loops which gives us six strands, cut the end off and soldered it. As you can see my soldering capabilities verge on art. That's just done with three very fine strands of the copper wire tied around but I'm going to reinforce it with some barber twine which I will tie on tightly. I might put a small tight wrap in the middle and I will be using the barber twine to pull it through 
from the plug end of the, of the heating tube through into the tube itself. But I think that should do. I will obviously be leaving these three loops as they are. All in, all in together, platinum, not platting, but certainly just squashing them together, tying some thread on, pull it through the tube and see what happens. That should, should do the job there. That's basically a rough diagram of what it would look like. So here's the setup. I have the thread running through the loops, up into the tube, all the way down the tube running out the other end. I've just dropped it like a darning needle to drop it through because you have to be careful because around about here there is the opening face of the control knob where the control knob goes in. So this is thinner diameter than this one. So you don't really want to try and damage the face of that area. The wick will be going roughly to the end of our here, which will leave you with a headspace from here, just where the end of this is. With the end of the point will be basically around about there. That's a very crap picture. Here I am with Tristan. I'm just showing you the setup we have here. Here is our replacement wick, homemade with copper wire. I've got twine running through the loops only. Put it on a needle, darning needle, and run it through the tube. Now you have to be a bit careful because here, as you got here at the end of this tube, that's where the valve sits. This is where the valve sits here. You can see this, you see? And of course the diameter is then different, so you don't want to try and damage the face of the tube on the inside here. Because that would be a bit bad. So we just drop a needle through there. And we will then slowly pull the wick through so that the end of the... This end... Will sit around about here. This is where the uh, where the plug goes in. The plug goes into a depth of here. So I just want to get it to fit in a little bit deeper so that the wick runs all the way down underneath the burner and stops probably about here, about midway. Okay. Now I'm Debating whether to put a little amount of uh, our wonderful PTFE tape just on here, just one wrap, so that it seals it up a bit, a bit better. It, when it first did a test burn, there was a moderate, a very, very moderate amount of spirits, meths came out at the end onto the thread, it just made the thread wet. It didn't actually set fire, burn or drip or anything, it just made the thread look wet. So I'm just going to put a little wrap around that to seal it up so it doesn't get any maths running back. And then we are finished. And then of course all we have to do is wait until we've painted up the bodywork, put it back together and see what we've got. Okay done. This is a halfway through video, just showing you how I'm rolling it through. Right, the other end. Take a few pictures for you so you can see that. As you can see, we are now in place. We might need to just pull it down a little bit more. Uh, perhaps two millimeters. What do you think, Tristan? Two millimeters? Do you think we should maybe pull it in two millimetres? So that when we pull in the plug, because the plug obviously doesn't want to necessarily touch it, added to which we need to get enough length to go underneath the burner. Okay, I think that will, well, that's going to be cool.
Cool. Here we are ready for assembly. I've painted the uh, frame as it were with the ubiquitous black hammerite which is an appalling paint. It's fine for rusty gates and fences but anything else is pretty shit. It doesn't really cover well so the finish is as you can see relatively bad. I've saved the or conserved the actual original uh, emblem. On the top here, oddly enough, is Arabic writing. I don't know what it says, I'll have to sort of look into that. Arabic writing. Tuum. Marker Tuum. Cool. So we've got all this done. Just got to put on the pan at the bottom, which I've not actually sort of painted over. I'm just going to just left that as clean it up and painted it. Um, some sort of like rust killer. I'm going to actually rub over the tank and the burner with some light copper paste to preserve it some more to stop it from corroding. But it's all sealed. There are no leaks. Blew out all the tube etc. down here with uh, the compressor and the compressed air. Took the thing, got the new wick element inside, which I've made, which I've got the video about, and the instructions, how to make. So let's put it together and set fire to it. Boom, baby, boom. Hopefully it won't go up in flames, but I, I think it should work. I, th I don't think there's any, should there be no real problem in the, the, the principle's the same. Yeah. Despite the fact the wick is made of, uh, cotton. That could be changed out for, if it doesn't really work, can change that out for uh, like um, like a, uh, uh, a ceiling, door ceiling material that you can buy from the hardware shop for stoves, you know, like a Kameen uh, uh, stoves. You can probably put that, swap that out or even get a, get a, a, a a roll of um, glass fiber might even do it, but I've made them the wire element inside. So if it, it doesn't make, you know, if it doesn't work with the cotton, we'll take that off, and we've still got the wire element element that I've soldered up, soldered up, and just wrap that then with either, you know, the door sealant, uh, oven door sealant, or glass. What do you call it? Fiber, yeah, fiberglass. It's like a fiberglass mat or something like that. That should probably do. So, it's fire time. Running very well. I think the flame is orange, probably because it's running over that copper thread that I put on the inside, causing it to oxidize the flame slightly. But it works. Hurrah!